On April 3rd of 2017, a distinctive Estonian man with silver hair arrived in Dublin on an easy jet flight from Alicante. He was dressed in khaki combat trousers and hiking boots, looking like he was planning an outdoor adventure. He had a backpack, complete with neatly rolled camping equipment. He blended into the crowd at the baggage hall, moving among the other passengers entering Ireland. But Imri Arrakis had not come to Ireland to go camping. His purpose was much darker. He had been hired to commit murder. Welcome back to Crime Chronicles. Today we take a look at the life and crimes of a truly psychopathic killer who acted as a hitman for Europe's top organized crime gangs. Imri Arrakis had arrived in Dublin after being hired by the notorious international drug cartel leader, Daniel Kinahan. Arrakis had worked for the cartel previously and was well trusted. This time his mission was to eliminate James Mago Gately, a devoted member of the Hutch gang and a significant adversary of the Kinahans. Despite his notoriety in his native Estonia, Arrakis was confident he could slip into Ireland unnoticed. This job offered him his largest payday yet, 100,000 euros, with an additional promise of doubling that amount if he could also dispatch Patsy Hutch, another Kinahan target. Arrakis had a track record of systematic planning and effective hits over recent years, making him a preferred choice for the Kinahan family. The Metropolitan Police suspected him of being the assassin who killed John Goldfinger Palmer, a former Brinks Matt robber, found shot six times in the chest in his Essex garden in 2015. Initially mistaken for a heart attack, detectives later surmised that a contract killer had monitored Palmer for days through a spy hole in the garden fence, striking in a spot without CCTV. After leaving Dublin airport, Arrakis boarded a bus to the city centre for a detailed two-hour surveillance of areas his targets were known to frequent. He even brought a wig from a local gift shop to aid his disguise. At 8.20pm, a Blakestown tyre van picked him up outside Barry's Hotel on Great Denmark Street. Unknown to Arrakis, he was under surveillance from the moment he stepped off the plane by the Irish police, who had been alerted by police from Eastern Europe. In late September of 2016, state prosecutors from Estonia, Lithuania and Poland ratified a treaty that targeted an international crime syndicate to which Imri Arrakis belonged. Both UK and Spanish police forces joined the initiative, dubbed Operation Icebreaker, which rapidly escalated into the largest crackdown in Europe against a gang implicated in narcotics trafficking and contract killing. The groundwork for this extensive operation was laid two years prior. One evening in early November of 2015, a Lithuanian crime boss nicknamed Diamond fell into an ambush. He had been under surveillance for months by an adept Estonian hit squad, meticulously planning the perfect moment and location to strike. Diamond, who was romantically linked to a Lithuanian pop star, was shot in the chest and neck and died swiftly, his assassins vanishing without a trace. Regrettably, Estonians have been known to export their expertise in contract killings. European authorities began leveraging underworld contacts to ascertain the identities of the assassins involved in the murder. Within a year, Imri Arrakis came under scrutiny. Detectives delved into analyzing his movements by retracing phone data and reviewing CCTV footage from the night of the murder. While two other criminals implicated in the murder remained under surveillance, the focus intensified on Imri Arrakis, notorious not just as a well-known criminal, but also as a celebrity gangster. Having spent many years between imprisonment in Russia and his native Estonia, he had settled on Spain's Costa del Sol, becoming a pivotal figure in a broad network of Eastern European criminals, who executed assignments across Europe for formidable drug cartels. Throughout 2016 and 2017, detectives noted an unusually high frequency of Arrakis's visits to Ireland, which might have been overlooked if not for the fierce gangland conflict unfolding there. Suspecting that Arrakis's expertise had already been utilized, police resolved to surveil him closely during his next trip to Ireland. Once back in Dublin, Arrakis was accompanied by a local, Stephen Fowler, who drove him around the city. 
60-year-old Fowler was well acquainted with the police and had been identified as an associate of the Kinahan organization. Arrakis was staying at the Fowler residence at Blakestown Cottages, oblivious to the police approaching the property. They stormed in at 11.25 p.m. to discover a bewildered Arrakis standing by a single bed, his encrypted BlackBerry mobile phone beside him on the couch. When the plot to assassinate was uncovered, officers were aware that the contents of the devices involved would be swiftly deleted to cover tracks. In a moment of quick thinking, one officer used his own mobile phone to take photographs of the open message thread on the suspect's device. The thread featured conversations among four usernames, Onu, Knife, Bon4, and Bon Nu. Another crucial piece of evidence surfaced, a scrap of paper with writing in Estonian and the name James Gately scribbled in English. The translated note directed, eighth row, second picture visible. In addition, police discovered a mirror brought just a day earlier, along with a wig stashed in a bag. This was alongside a bundle of euros and sterling notes. Detective David Gallagher later reviewed these secret communications that detailed the meticulous planning behind the attempt on Gately's life. One message from Knife, dated April 4th at 1.12 p.m. and directed to Bon Nu, described the layout meticulously. The car exits the rear of this building via a shutter which operates up and down with a buzzer. There's a ball camera above the entrance. Champagne-colored Toyota Avensis. His parking space is directly in front. As soon as the shutter opens, there's a gym. He drives most days. He seems to go to Newry and back. A follow-up message from Bon Yu at 10.17 a.m. to Knife queried, OK, and where can we see photos of him? A subsequent message from Knife to Bon Yu at 1.12 p.m. detailed how to locate a photo. For the picture, go into Google, type James Gately Dublin, click on images, then look at the eighth line. It's the second photo. He's wearing a black suit and beneath the image, it clearly states James Gately. It's a clear image of him. The Irish police found themselves with a solid lead as Arrakis had been arrested in the residence of a well-known Kinahan associate surrounded by incriminating items. However, it was the following messages that sealed his fate and demonstrated his intentions clearly. One read, so far it seems feasible to take him down as he exits his car based on the Google Maps images. There's an open car park behind the house, but if that's closed, we'll need another plan. If not at the car, then perhaps on his way to the front door. There are large adverts along the route that could potentially offer cover. Although it's clear, there aren't many places to hide, especially waiting for the moment he emerges from the door. A silencer would be useful, particularly as accuracy is critical. If the scene in real life matches the Google image, a single headshot from a distance could suffice. Additionally, there's a technique to prevent him from closing his front door allowing me to follow him into the corridor, though it only works if the door frame is metallic. The image suggests it's plastic, but I'll see what I can do. Best regards. The detailed planning illustrated the calculated nature of the plot, leaving Arrakis in an increasingly vulnerable legal position. When the case was brought to trial, the evidence from a handwritten note found during the investigation was crucial. On the reverse of this note, were 50 digit codes necessary for accessing the phone and the implicated usernames, and a fingerprint from Arrakis was later identified on the paper. Arrakis would eventually plead guilty and be jailed for conspiracy to commit murder for his part in the Gately plot. He claimed that jail in Ireland was like a hotel if you were friends with the Kinahans. Arrakis is now in a Lithuanian prison, awaiting trial for murder and has recently given an interview saying authorities offered him millions of dollars plus a new identity and relocation to America to give up the Kinahans. He didn't comply, so will most likely spend the rest of his life in and out of the prison system. A sad and pathetic ending for a man once dubbed The Butcher. Thank you for joining us today on Crime Chronicles. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the channel with your friends.